I made uh, I made two poor decisions with my drag race career. One was okay. when I was crowned. I said uh, Happy Halloween. So now my favorite day of the year. It's like the hardest working day of my yeah. life. Happy Halloween, everybody. And my other mistake was I unfortunately won the first time. So I don't get any of that all-star dish. Here you are, darling. On behalf of your millions of fans around the world, my queen, I bow to thee. <laughs> God damn it! She went that all-star zhuzh. I know, I went from the... Ah! <laughs> Who is it? That's, that's the old Sharon. <laughs> I miss the can old I speak Sharon. With your, can I speak with the manager? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous! So Speaking we're, of all... <laughs> if, I knew, up on you. if I knew she was going to make that much money, I would have stuck with her. Hello. I would have worked it out. <laughs> I would have got some counseling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another edition of Pep Talks. I'm here oh. with the fabulous, fabulous, legendary, gorgeous, uh, unique, so spoopy, spoopy, <laughs> and so intelligent, Miss Sharon Needles. <laughs> wrote a book. I, that's what I, I would want to read your book. My book. Well, yeah. Um, if I was if I was truly honest with my book, it would it would come off as a JT Leroy novel because uh, drag race, especially when they get off a of drag race, all honesty goes out the window. It's all sunshine and rainbows. E is for eleganza extravaganza. I don't know what that means. I think it just means you look nice. But if, like, if we told the stories of hooking on the, being a teenage cross-dressing hooker on Illinois Avenue in Des Moines, Iowa, fucking uh, sucking dick for methamphetamine, if people actually told the true tale of what drag queens really are. Because RuPaul's Drag Race says we have charisma, uniqueness, and talent. But there's a whole lot of it. But the show edits out the whole uh, coke snorting, boyfriend stealing, cock sucking, shoplifting, alcoholic asshole aspect that I think is what truly binds all drag queens together is that we live really hard lives. I'm gonna steal your man. It's true. <laughs> it does candy coat. So yeah. people, because we're not the best role models. People have a <laughs> the people have a better idea of what it's like to be to live in this world, but not quite very accurate. Have you ever hooked? Have you ever hooked? Actually, I actually I thought about it. You've never done it. I've never done it. That's, no, I've done. That's shocking. I've you're had a lot of girl, girl, and you have to hustle constantly. You know what? Real talk, it was something that I really struggled with because there was a moment in time before, obviously before I got on Drag Race, that I said, okay, I want to continue my transition. You could have went to Lucky Chang's and after midnight in the basement, or a little... I could have. <laughs> but I knew, I for me, it just, I wanted something a little bit different. And I, and I was a little bit resentful at the theme of sex work because I felt like it was the only thing, the only option I had. You kind of can fall into it because like casual sex can be such an easy well, thing. Well, it's and not then, so much the money either. It's also the attention of being yeah. desired. You know? Yeah, there's a, it's like, layers. Do you like me enough that you pay for it? Oh my God, what? Yeah. When, you're, when you're damaged goods in a dented can, um, sometimes you'll take it when you can really? get Yeah. You want to fuck me and pay me? I must be so beautiful. Girl. What's, have, well, tell us about Battle Axe, the, the thought behind it, the writing. I've, I watched your Hey Queen talking about it, but I want to... It's my aggression record. There's an aspect of this job that is so aggravating and uh, stressful and hard and and it's our job to go out on stage and entertain tons of kids, but then if you if you flip the camera and look at what the audience is seeing, they're seeing a very lonely, <laughs> overworked human being. Under, underslept. Right. Yeah, and I, I think drag queens tend to make very happy, uh, 
uh, music, and I just wanted to be a little more honest so I could use the stage as my punching bag. <laughs> And my last record, Taxidermy, which was my love record, because no matter how weird you are or uh, off the beaten path you are, there's two things that can connect, that join the human condition and make us all uh, together, and that is love and death. And I sing enough about death, so I made a love record, so I wanted to make a hate record. It's a hate record, ladies and gentlemen. You have to, have, you already have it. I'm, I'm watching this, the kids. They know every word already. You know, it's fantastic. And I'm really, I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, and your music career as well. Okay. Go. Yeah. You make the kids happy. Excuse my beauty, if you can't take it. Don't go hating, cause I'm a cutie. Oh yeah, I do have a little something going on. But you've always done that. Like, I've been a fan of yours before, Drivers. I've come see you at industry and therapy, and I would always come and see you in Cherry Vine Show, and you are just, you are so good at uh, creating smiles and positivity and, and having, and you do it in, like, that non-fake way. It's not like you do it on stage and then you walk off. Gird your loins. I'm very genuine at that. I think that's why you're so successful. We go way race. back before, before Drag Race, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. It's true. Um, well, they are calling us to the stage. Oh. One more. One more. Fast forward 10 years and... Dead. Yeah, because you're a bitch. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> After we resuscitate you. Uh, <laughs> fast forward 10 years, you've made a, a series of successful, you've done it with music, you've done it with, you know, in the foreseeable future of the past. What What is something that we wouldn't expect about you that you would want to get into? Well, there's two, there's... Other than a uh, celebrity alcoholic crossdresser, my other dream job is housewife because I'm so good at it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> like, I know as much as like, you know, spooky and punk as I appear, I, I just love housework. But uh, what I really want to do next is um, uh, I want a podcast. That's perfect. You don't have to get ready. And you're so deep. And you have so much knowledge. <laughs> so deep. I, I, you have so much knowledge. I'm like a public pool. I'm deep and also shallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's I didn't want to say the shallow. And you can pee in me and probably not get caught. <laughs> yeah. um, that's why I said I would want to read your book. You know. So now we just got to teach you how to read. Reading's just not for PPO hair anymore. Oh, <laughs> it's true. That's every time. Did the you ever see me upset about mouth? that? Is that you want a goddamn cruise? Girl. I love her to death. Um, I wish I had 365 days off of work, though, to do all those drag looks. I, but I Which have, were genius. When I get down on myself, I think I didn't I didn't win Drag Race because they loved me. I won Drag Race because they hated her, and I hated in a lot of uh, that negativity towards her. And so uh, anytime I can throw her a bonus, stand up for her, or collaborate with her, I do. That's why, you know, I loved having her in the video for it's Battle Axe. Fantastic. A, gr a great cameo. Right. And if you think about it, if we didn't have Fifi O'Hare on season four, it would have been fucking really boring. <laughs> because we all really enjoyed each other's company. <laughs> I was there with popcorn. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you, I gotta, I gotta go slip into something more uncomfortable and uh, let the kids have it. Happy Halloween, baby. Mm -hmm. I, love I love you, I love you. And even though Peppermint did not win the coveted crown of uh, season nine of RuPaul's Drag Race, she is the proud owner of two Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sis. Bye, guys. <laughs>